Good afternoon, and welcome to 1210 Mass at the Newman Center. Our opening song is number 681, We Remember. We'll sing the refrain, verse 1, and the refrain. That's number 681, We Remember, the refrain, verse 1, and the refrain. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. My dear brothers and sisters in the risen Christ, in our gospel from St. Luke, our blessed Lord in his humanity models what it is to be a person of prayer. Let us ask our blessed Lord for the grace and blessing necessary to be those persons of prayer. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You were sent to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption, look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, how can any one of you with the case against another dare to bring it to the unjust for judgment instead of to the holy ones? Do you not know that the holy ones will judge the world? If the world is to be judged by you, are you unqualified for the lowest law courts? 
Do you not know that we will judge angels? Then why not everyday matters? If therefore you have courts for everyday matters, do you seat as judges people of no standing in the church? I say this to shame you. Can it be that there is no one, not one among you wise enough to be able to settle a case between brothers? But rather, brother goes to court against brother, and that before unbelievers? Now indeed, then it is in any case a failure on your part that you have lawsuits against one another. Why not rather put up with injustice? Why not rather let yourselves be cheated? Instead, you inflict injustice and cheat, and this to brothers. Do you not know that the unjust will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators nor idolaters nor adulterers nor boy prostitutes nor sodomites nor thieves nor the greedy nor drunkards nor slanders nor robbers will inherit the kingdom of God. That is what some of you used to be. But now you've had yourselves washed. You were sanctified. You are justified in the name of Lord Jesus Christ and in the spirit of our God. The word of the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song of praise in the assembly of the faithful. Let Israel be glad in their maker. Let the children of Zion rejoice in their king. Let them praise his name in the festive dance. Let them praise to him with timbrel and harp. For the Lord loves his people and he adorns the lowly with victory. Let the faithful exalt in glory. Let them sing for joy upon their couches. Let the high praises of God be in their throats. This is the glory of all his faithful. Alleluia. Lord, the light in his people. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel. According to Luke. Jesus departed to the mountain to pray, and he spent the whole night in prayer to God. When day came, he called his disciples to himself, and from them he chose twelve, whom he also named apostles. Simon, whom he named Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, John, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James the son of Alphaeus, Simon who was called a zealot, and Judas the son of James, and Judas Iscariot who would betray him. And he came down with them and stood on a stretch of level ground. A great crowd of his disciples and a large number of people from all Judea and Jerusalem and from the coastal region of Tyre and Sidon, came to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. And even those who were tormented by unclean spirits were cured. Everyone in the crowd sought to touch him because power came forth from him, and he healed them all. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters in the risen Christ, in these days of ordinary time, as we make our way through the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, and we journey through the gospel according to St. Luke, 
the Word of God continues to instruct us, to edify us, and to form us, to instruct us, to edify us, and to inform us. That beautiful first reading, St. Paul is continuing to struggle with the Christians in Corinth. Now he says to the Christians, you are a disgrace. You are behaving in a disgraceful manner. You are airing all your dirty laundry before the secular power. You're not able, even able, to resolve your own disputes, to mediate among yourselves. You're not even able to have communion one with the other. And yet, what do you do? You hurry off to the secular courts. You air all of your grievances before those who do not know God. It's very interesting that Paul says this to the church in Corinth. Paul also put in place leaders for the church in Corinth, but something must have happened there because we hear no mention of them. Whether they were appalling leaders, we're not entirely sure. Whether the people kind of pushed them out, we're not entirely sure. But there's never any reference to those whom Paul left to lead the church in Corinth. It seems that all of the Christians in Corinth bypass those who have been left and continue to go to Paul with all of their problems. They continue to go to Paul with all of their problems. But consider the gospel. In the gospel of Luke today, our blessed Lord presents to us what it is to be a our blessed Lord presents to us what it is to be a person of prayer. And this is very important in the life of Christ. Notice that our Lord is not praying to himself. His, his humanity is engaging the Father. His humanity is engaging the Father. And throughout the scriptures, we see the humanity of Jesus pray. We see the Lord praying in the synagogue. We see the Lord praying in the temple. We see the Lord observing the Jewish holy days, observing the Jewish high holy days. We see him preaching. We see him teaching. We see him as a person of prayer. Why? Because our humanity is to go the same direction. Our humanity requires that we too become persons of prayer. In fact, the apostles were so, so impressed with how the Lord prayed in his humanity that they are the same ones who say to him, Master, Master, teach us to pray. Teach us to pray. I know you've heard me say this a million times, but the highest form of prayer that we possess, this side of heaven, is the Holy Mass. And the Holy Mass is fed by our personal prayer, by our devotional prayer, the fact that we are persons who pray morning prayer, evening prayer, night prayer, grace before meals, grace after meals, who spend time before the Lord each day, who have a consciousness of God throughout the all of every day, all of that prayer is brought to the altar of God. And while we are here at the altar, there is a way that we participate in the Mass, present company excluded, of course, present company excluded, of course, but we don't participate in the Mass like bumps on a log, whispering the responses, not making the responses, not singing the hymns, being asleep from the very time the priest says, please stand, because this is the highest form of prayer that we have. And so we throw our entire selves into this prayer. This is the most important prayer that we will pray today. I know it's not easy when life gets in the way, I know it's not easy, but remember, and I said this to another parish I was in, remember that when we come to Mass, we're not going to the electric chair. We shouldn't look as if we're going to the electric chair. We shouldn't look tired and sleepy and listless and disinterested, present company excluded, of course. So it's an invitation to all of us that Christ reminds us of what it is that our humanity pray. And this is the highest prayer. This is the highest prayer. So I ask myself today, how do I as a priest pray this highest prayer? How do we as the faithful pray this highest prayer? May the Lord give each of us his grace 
May the Lord give each of us his blessing, that we may participate in the Mass fully, consciously, and actively. May the name of Jesus be blessed and praised, now and forever. Amen. And let us place our prayers before God, our Father. For the church, may the Lord amplify her prophetic voice in this world, calling for God's peace and justice to flourish. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders, May the Prince of Peace inspire them in promoting peaceful relationships among all nations and peoples. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For farmers and all in the agricultural world who help with the harvesting of food, may the spirit of life bless them with an abundant bounty. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered in this holy place, may we, through the guidance of the Holy Spirit, continue the legacy of Jesus' disciples and bring God's saving world, word to the world, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died in the light of Christ, may they delight in the Father's presence in his heavenly kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We make our prayers with confidence through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Blessed you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who give us the gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty, and by partaking of the sacred mystery, we may be faithfully united in mind and heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, 
fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection till you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters and all who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, the glorious martyrs, St. John Henry Newman, and all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin 
and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other this sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, Richard. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life.
Grant that your faithful, O Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life through the food of your word and heavenly sacrament, may so benefit from your beloved Son's great gifts that we may merit an eternal share in his life, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And to our dear freshmen, you are welcome, welcome, welcome. Please remember that Tuesday evenings here are freshman nights here at Holy Spirit Newman Center. So we have dinner for freshmen beginning at 6.30, and then there will be formation offered after that. So it's important. The university is unfamiliar, but the church is familiar. So you're most, most welcome to the all of everything, but especially the Tuesday nights. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Five seven, six five seven. We cannot measure how you heal. Verses one and three. That's number six fifty seven. We cannot measure how you heal. Verses one and three.